In my earlier video on freeze drying, I have explained the components of freeze drying units and their operations. In this video, I am explaining the freeze drying process and its operation based on a phase diagram. Phase diagram of water is a graphical representation of the physical states of water under different conditions of temperature and pressure. A typical phase diagram has pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. First, we could consider the triple point of water. In thermodynamics, the triple point of a substance is the temperature and pressure at which the three phases, that is gas, liquid, and solid of that substance coexist. The triple point of water is 0 0.01 degree C and 0 0.610 kilopascal. Second one is the water vapor line passing through the triple point. Water remains in a liquid state on the left side of the water vapor line and right side water remains as vapor. As we cross the lines or curves on the phase diagram, liquid water transforms to water vapor and it is vaporization. Similarly, if we cross from the right side to the left side, then water vapor is condensed to liquid phase and it is called condensation. Third one is the freezing melting line. Water remains ice in the left side of the freezing melting line. As we cross the lines from left to right, ice transforms to liquid water and it is the melting process. Similarly, if we cross from the right side to the left side, then liquid water transforms to ice and it is fr the freezing process. Fourth one is the sublimation line. Water remains ice in the left side of the sublimation line. As we cross the lines or curves from the left to the right, ice transforms to water vapor and it is the sublimation process. Similarly, if we cross from the right side to the left side, then water vapor is transformed to ice and it is the deposition process. The phase diagram could guide us to the appropriate temperature and pressure for the freeze drying process. Please watch this video until the end and subscribe to our channel if you like this video. In the following slides, I am going to discuss the drying path in the phase diagram. We could consider scenario 1. Sample at atmospheric condition that is 20 degrees C and one atmospheric which is 100 kilopascal. This is located at point 1 in the phase diagram. We want to operate drying at 10 kilopascal and minus 10 degrees C. First we can reduce the sample temperature to minus 10 degrees C. While the sample remains at atmospheric condition, it is located at point 2. Second, we can reduce the pressure to 10 kilopascal. It is located at point 3. Now we could start heating to 50 degrees C for drying. This is point 4. From the phase diagram, we could clearly observe that this drying process is vacuum drying, not freeze drying, since there is no sublimation. We could consider scenario 2. In this case, we want to dry at 10 kilopascal by freezing the sample at minus 40 degrees C. First cool the sample at minus 40 degrees C. This is point 2. Then reduce the pressure to 10 kilopascal. This is point 3. Finally, start heating to 50 degrees C for drying. In this case, we are also unable to produce freeze drying. In this case, First, ice is melting to water and then liquid water is vaporized. This process is ice melting followed by 
vacuum drying. Now we can consider scenario 3. In this case, we want to dry at 0 0.2 kilopascal by freezing the sample at minus 40 degrees C. First, cool the sample at minus 40 degrees C. This is 0.2. Then reduce the pressure to 0 0.2 kilopascal. This is 0.3. Finally, start heating to 40 degrees C for drying until the 0.4. In this case, we can observe sublimation since sample could pass the sublimation line and we could achieve initial stage of freeze drying. After the initial stage, when all ice is sublimated, then second stage vacuum drying could start to remove bound or unfreezable water. Three interesting points we could observe here. First, sample must be cooled below ice water vapor line. Second, vacuum pressure must be below 0.61 kilopascal. And third, heating temperature must pass the ice sublimation line depending freezing temperature and vacuum pressure. For example, if freezing temperature is minus 40 degrees C and pressure 0 0.2 kilopascal, then the sublimation temperature should be at least more than minus 20 degrees C. We could observe it from the ice sublimation line in the phase diagram. If the vacuum pressure is high, say 0 0.4 kilopascal, then minimum temperature for freeze drying would be higher for sublimation, that is minus 4 degrees C. Please go through the phase diagram again to understand this point. Now we could look at the material side. First cooling causes water in the material to form ice. Only freezable water can form ice. Unfreezable and bound water remains as bound and does not form ice. Ice formation causes concentration of solution phase. More ice formation causes more concentration of solutes in the solution phase in the solid matrix. This is called progressive freeze concentration. After freezing, a vacuum is created in the chamber. The vacuum should be below 610 pascal in order to achieve sublimation. Then mild heating process starts. Low heat energy causes ice to sublimate. This is the initial stage of freeze drying process. This causes the formation of pores if the solid matrix could have enough mechanical stress not to collapse. After the sublimation process, bound or unfreezable water is removed by vacuum drawing at low pressure. This is the second stage of freeze drying process. How much residual water could be removed depends on the bonding strength of the water with solids and solid matrix and the strength of the vacuum pressure. I am sure you should be able to identify what are the problems of freeze drying of dead fruit and apple slices if you have gone through my two videos on freeze drying. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video.